G'day, Crinch here with New Game Plus TV and Z Games. I'm at GCAP 2019 day two. A little bit worse for wear, but I'm still here and I'm here with three beautiful people uh, speaking about Game Workers Unite. We just got out of a talk. Um, first of all, would you mind introducing yourselves and telling me a little bit about uh, your involvement and involvement with Game Workers Unite? I'm Maze. my pronouns are they, them. And I'm one of the very active Melbourne delegates for Game Workers. Um, I like to cover a lot of the freelancers and indies, and I come from audio myself. Uh, I'm Morgan, I, uh, he, him. I have been involved for about a year with the movement, and I am in a design and technical writing background. Um, I'm Soap. I've been involved with Game Workers Unite for a few months now, but the unionist movement in general for a little bit longer. I've worked with Unions ACT, uh, which is the Trade and Labor Council in um, the ACT. Um, and I also teach game design. So always pushing the GWU to my students. <laughs> so you use the, the sort of wording there, Game Workers Unite movement. Would you mind sort of speaking a little bit to what Game Workers Unite is, um, how it started and where it's at? Game Workers Unite um, started off at a conference called the Game Developers Conference, which is in San Francisco, um, where a whole lot of workers crashed a panel about worker rights that was being run by the IGDA. And since then, we've organized online mostly on Discord, uh, all internationally. So that's why it's a bit more of a movement, yep. is that in each country, we have to deal with the actual unionization part in really different ways. Is Game Workers Unite only a movement everywhere, or has it been able to actually unionize in some territories? Mm. So um, there is a British Game Workers Unite, and then in some territories, Game Workers Unite has been working with established unions to create a branch of them, or even just to improve the union's game knowledge. So, uh, Game Workers Unite is a movement, especially because of the toxicity that exists around the ideas of game workers and working in games itself. Uh, things like crunch are just kind of expected parts. Uh, people are expected to do unpaid internships and just expected to be part of the process. It's really a movement because it's not just fighting for people's rights, but also fighting to change people's minds about how they should be treated within the industry. At this talk, what was the general sort of sense? I mean, Morgan, you were one of the speakers up there. What was the general sense in your view of how Australia is responding to the movement? Look, there's a mixed response. I think there's a lot of people that are really interested in being a part of the movement, but there's a lot of hesitation still. A lot of people are, um, I think, still concerned about being seen to be part of a union movement. and something we actively have to to work against is the preconceived notions of unions as you know bunches of thugs um, but it's not it's a group of workers working together to improve the working rights for themselves and for everyone um, one of the one of the questions that um, came up in the talk earlier was how unions will benefit freelancers and how it will benefit um, a lot of smaller like studios because the reality is much of the Australian scene is made up of smaller studios can you speak a little bit about how the movement may be able to affect positive change uh, in those areas. So as a freelancer myself, um, a huge concern is where we accidentally or deliberately undercut each other. So coming from audio, um, a lot of people don't even know how much they're worth. So things like establishing rate cards and establishing um, template contracts and that sort of thing really helps my field so that I can work from a much higher baseline when I'm negotiating. Um, when it comes to these smaller indies, often what a union can give and what Game Workers Unite has already done is how to run your business ethically as well. Um, so whether that's to go to a more, instead of establishing a company, establishing a co-op instead, um, or just knowing, okay, so if these are all of the worker rights, maybe I should give myself those rights too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you did, a, uh, you did a talk yesterday about co-ops versus companies. Would, what, what are some of the, the brief um, differences that, like, between those two things for people that aren't aware of, of what the difference is? Sure. So a co-op, um, everyone who is a member of the co-op gets one vote. <laughs> and that means that they can talk about what everyone is paid, whether people are paid differently, how profit share is moved and things like that. Um, the other main difference is that with co-ops, you're starting from a point where everyone um, does get equal share of the profit. So in a company, the profit by, defo by default will only go to the directors and the CEOs. And then if you're an employee, you're really trying to 
ask sweetly, oh, can I have a little bit of revenue share? While a co-op is from the opposite, is, all right, we all have the revenue share. Is that fair, like, or should we, you know, take a little bit for the business side or how, now that everyone controls these funds, let's vote how we're going to use them. So in, in this talk, uh, it was brought up that the Game Workers Unite movement is there, but also there are already other unions that in some cases have a framework for game workers to exist under. Can you speak a little bit to why that might be valuable to some game workers? Absolutely. So Game Workers Unite is not a registered union. Um, and there are some benefits that registered unions get that something like Game Workers Unite doesn't quite get. They have a lot of laws around it and they can fight for workers' rights in ways that Game Workers Unite can't. Uh, Game Workers Unite is free, which is a benefit, uh, unlike unions. Um, and joining both means that you are organized with your specific field with Game Workers Unite, but also have a union body to back you up with things in the workplace. If something goes wrong. So I guess if people want to know more about Game Workers Unite, uh, where can they go? Uh, the best place is to visit our website, gameworkers.com.au. They can also jump on our social media. Uh, we're on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, they can, through the website, join our Discord, and that's where a lot of our activity takes place. So that's the best bet for finding us. Thank you guys so much for your time.